Now explain how, what the DC Bethesda vibe is. Would you say it's kind of arrogant? You know, what they're doing down here, actually, Tone, is they've got this whole bottled up on a hill. Everybody's a Fed or a Fed contractor or some kind of legislator or some smarmy freaking, you know, one of these freaking lobbyists, you know, just whining and dining, greasing palms and whatnot, and they all look at me like I'm a bum. Like I'm a bum. Right, I can you, see right, you it in catch her a, eyes. You catch a glare from someone in a Patagonia vest who looks like they haven't seen the sun in about six months. Huh? Staring daggers at you for no damn reason. They won't even say hi. They won't even say hi. You know? And I'll tell you what. It's only one shade of people that are acting like that. You know, I just want to know why they're all wearing teal colors. That's the only thing. You know, like every day's Easter or something. It's really confusing the shit out of me over here. I typically judge the seasons by what people are wearing, so I agree. It's really disorienting here. I don't know if we're coming or going into Christmas or Halloween or whatnot, but I can't tell with all the different color vests, and it's all they do is they got a vest on because it's Sunday. It's a little chilly with the, with the brisk fall air and whatnot. They're all doing a pumpkin patch in a right, haunted yeah, house. I'm getting that. You know? I'm definitely getting a whiff of a uh, pumpkin spice condescension on the streets right here. It's a strong flavor and it permeates the air. Okay, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Bonnie Does it? Here we are in Rock Creek Park, Maryland. Beautiful American beach right there. Vegas Grandifolia. Also got some viburnums. Also got some uh, ilex opaca, American holly right there. Another really beautiful tree. You can see got a rich understory. Lots of stuff going on, lots of decomposition, bountiful fungi when you're here at the right time of year. But the plant that we're going to see is actually not even uh, living above ground right now. It's already gone for the season, already flowered. We're just going to go look at the fruits. Let's go check out the ghost pipe Monotropa uniflora. God, these American beaches are so pretty. I don't even care that some jackass carved their name in it. So the plant we're going to look at is a parasite. And when a plant's a parasite, it can either be a partial parasite, what we call a hemiparasite, or it can be a hollow parasite, which means it doesn't produce any chlorophyll and it's, it needs to parasitize another plant. This plant is technically a hollow parasite, but it doesn't parasitize other plants like some plants will. This is Monotropa uniflora, and it's related to blueberries. Doesn't look like much right now. It's already done. When it's going off, it's fucking wild. It looks like some sort of weird stalked eyeball, completely white and it's achlorophilus, it doesn't produce any chlorophyll because it doesn't need to. But what we're looking at here are these fruits. So the flowers are already done, they're kind of nodding when they're getting pollinated, and then when they get pollinated, they, they turn erect like this, and what you get is this dry capsule because every flower produces a fruit. All right, we tend to think of fruits as things that we eat, you buy at the store, but a fruit is just an ovary. Fruits are ovaries. Ovaries contain seeds, which are also known as ovules. If a flower is pollinated, whether it's a grass flower or a, or a maple flower or a lily flower, if it's pollinated, it will produce a fruit, okay? And, and you know, even if it's not pollinated, some plants will produce fruits. The fruits just won't produce any good seeds. So uh, anyway, this is monotropa fruit, and it's this loculicidal capsule. So it's a dried dehiscent capsule, and it splits open in the middle of the locules as opposed to at the seams, at the septa. There you can see there's the old stigma which is where the pollen gets deposited up top. But let's crack this thing open and look at how tiny the seeds are. So here's one of those capsules. I split it open, and those little, what look like little beige hairs, you're looking at hundreds of seeds. They are tiny, okay? You know, the light's going to be too shitty. I can't, uh, can't really film here. But regardless, we'll have to go down to the parking lot and look at light. But regardless, all right, we're not even commenting on how cool and bizarre this thing looks, nor how weird it is that uh, you got a plant that can parasitize fungi. The fungus that this is parasitizing is mycorrhizal that is symbiotic, mutually symbiotic with the surrounding trees, the tulip poplars and uh, the oaks and the, uh, the beach, okay? And that's probably what this relationship started off as millions of years ago. It was probably a mutualistic relationship. You had a mutualism, you had a plant and a fungus exchanging, uh, the plant would give carbohydrates and the fungus would give nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen, but at some point, the plant stopped giving back and uh, just started taking, which is kind of what humans are doing. But regardless, this doesn't seem to be hurting the fungus too much. If it hurt the fungus too much, it wouldn't be around. If you're a parasite and you hurt your host, you're not going to live much longer than your host is. Anyway, let's go look at these seeds. 
Anyway, before we look at these seeds, let's check, let's check this plant out too, okay? Here's another parasite, but this is a plant that parasitizes other plants. In this case, this is parasitizing this oak. This is a member of the paintbrush family, Orobankaceae. This is in the genus Conophilus. This is Conophilus americana. The, the common name for this is bear corn because it does kind of look like a corn on the cob, but this uh, this is a, another achlorophilus parasite. But again, this is a hollow parasite that's parasitizing another plant as opposed to a mycoheterotroph like that ghost pipe, which is parasitizing a fungus in the ground. So this is just parasitizing this plant. And from the looks of this oak, how massive it is, it's probably not hurting it at all. Just taking a little bit, borrowing a little bit, doesn't give anything back, that's okay. And there's been nothing to select for this thing you know, being eradicated. In other words, the, the, the tree is probably not even producing defenses against it because it's the, what it's taking is so negligible compared to all the, the biomass that the tree itself is producing. But regardless, it doesn't produce any chlorophyll. It would have been blooming four months ago. Doesn't produce any chlorophyll. Really notable looking plant. Doesn't have any leaves. It's got rudimentary leaves. They're just essentially little bracts that protect the flowers. This whole rod does indeed look like a corn on the cob where each kernel would be a flower. So it just pops up, uh, shoots out flowers. It's still alive in the ground. It's attached to that root via a historial root to the host plant. But uh, it doesn't, again, doesn't need any leaves, doesn't need any chlorophyll. Just pops up flowers, gets pollinated, produces seed, and then uh, dies back to the root. And then the seed hopefully gets dispersed. Anyway, let's keep going on. Let's look. There you go. So there's the fruit of that ghost pipe split open. And there are those seeds looking like little orange hairs. They're not even a millimeter long. They're about half a millimeter long by 0.1 millimeters wide. Why are seed, why are these seeds so tiny? Because seeds, you normally think seeds got to be a decent size. They got to be big enough, have a little backpack full of carbohydrates to take along with them on their journey so they can sprout and get going. When they can open up shop, put up those two little cotyledons, those seed leaves, and get going. But again, if you're not producing chlorophyll anyways because you parasitize a fungus, you don't even make your own, you're not an autotroph, you don't even make your own carbohydrates, you don't have to have that backpack. All you gotta have is enough cells to make sure you're able to attach to the fungus, send out that hostorial root that attaches to the fungus, and get going. And then cell division can, uh, can commence. You could just start uh, dividing and growing, uh, feeding off that host fungus. And that's what these do, all right? So in this case, they're trading in uh, a, a large size and packing enough carbs, you know, packing a sandwich with them in a backpack, they're not doing it. They're trading that backpack in for the small size, which is much more easily dispersed and covers a larger surface area, thus ensuring that one out of these many thousands of seeds inside this tiny capsule that's the size of a marble will end up coming into contact with the host fungus, germinating, and then forming a new colony of plants. Orchids do the same thing. Orchid seeds can be tiny because they are also uh, either uh, parasites or mutualists with fungus. They, or, many orchid seeds basically need fungus to germinate, to get going. And so that's why they can afford to be so small. Pretty goddamn remarkable. Look at how tiny those are. You wouldn't even think they're seeds. They're just little spindles. But if you look at them under a microscope, they got the little divots and dentations that many seeds have. When you look at them under a microscope as well, you can tell it's very obviously a seed. So just a pretty remarkable adaptation to the lifestyle. The mycoheterotrophic, that is, fungal parasitizing lifestyle, parasitizing fungus lifestyle that this weird ass plant has. This is a pretty widespread plant too. You get it down in those forests where the butterflies go, the monarchs go, because it's uh, you know parasitizing the ectomycorrhizal fungus down there that associates with those Abies religiosa trees, those fir trees that the monarchs like to uh, roost in up there at 9,000, 10,000 feet in the forest of Mitchell County. Anyway, that's all I got. We're going to go visit the mall and I'm going to go pee in some bushes over there. We're doing a little, you know, public urination speech. You know, the benefits of publicly urinating, all right, we would never pee on a concrete. We pee in the soil and not on the leaves in the soil to add nitrogen, okay? So anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Louis, let's go. Come on. Look at it. See, there's a nice little cluster of monotropa seeds right there. You got about 80 seeds right there. Little orange hairs, little spindle-shaped seeds. That's what they look like, little orange hairs. There you go. There's there's a nice money shot of those seeds. See that? Got the hand lens over to pardon how shaky it is. I'm fucking just kneeled down here. All right, holding the hand lens. My little jeweler's loop over the camera. There you go. See that? It's how tiny that stuff is. Look at that. Easy for the wind dispersal, nice. Just gotta hope you land on a, a mycelial thread of the uh, host fungus.